this is my male Bangai Cardinal. He has been holding eggs for 26 days and they should be fully developed by now. Uh, he does have a very bad habit of swallowing the eggs. He's never actually naturally released them, despite the fact I've had him for quite some time. Uh, there's the female. So I'm actually going to net him to get him to release the babies. Uh, they live in my frag tank extension. This is a 24 gallon tank. It's basically a 20 gallon long, although it has an extra couple inches front to back. Uh, I actually deliberately turned down the flow, thinking they would be more comfortable, but he still wouldn't release the babies. Once I get the babies out, they're gonna go in this little two gallon cube here, which has no water in it yet. Uh, it has a small beta heater, which actually does work. I check the temperature a couple times a day and this fake anemone for them to hide in, along with an air pump. Uh, this tank is actually drilled, but both holes are plugged for this. The two gallon tank works good because I can check on them a lot and see what they're eating and siphon out everything they don't eat. Just behind it, I have some baby brine shrimp, which were started yesterday. And then I have one more here so that I have two going, one in the morning, one in the night. So they're always eating freshly hatched. I do have Salcon as well. And then I have an Apex pod culture here. Here is the previous batch of bang guys. These guys are now seven or eight weeks old. And you can see they basically look exactly like the parents, just smaller versions. I got 15, although one does have a defect and will need to be culled. So as of now, I do have 14 that are still likely to survive, although I'm not going to get my hopes up until they're a little bit bigger. You can see I've got some Ocellaris clownfish in with them. Uh, they're just to help train them to eat pellets and frozen food. They really only prefer to eat live food, however I can get them to eat some frozen and they kind of have a little bit of interest in TDO. Uh, that's where the clownfish come in, they see them eating it and they're like, oh, food. Uh, the glare is really bad, but this is a 10 gallon tank. It's part of my clownfish grow-out system. You can see I've got some baby maroon clownfish here. And then just over here is where my other maroons are. And all these tanks are plumbed together and it has a skimmer, uh, marine pure block, whatnot. So I'm going to net the male and then we'll see what he has inside him. Looks like we got about 16 babies. We'll have to do a recount. No, well, I guess there's more than 16. Here they are in the two gallon cube. There's about 20 something. I guess I'll get a final count in a minute. Oh, I did get some pictures while they were in the pitcher, so it'll be easier to count them, but they're all seem to be swimming okay. The last time I did have two that couldn't swim and passed away. Uh, you can see how small these guys are. And the previous batch is right here. Again, these ones look basically like adults. But these guys definitely look like babies. Here you can see I've added some apex pods and rotifers and even though they do look like they still have some yolk, many of them are already hunting. So far they all look pretty good. I don't see any defects. Uh, there is one kind of tucked away in the corner here, but I think this happened last time too where one of them didn't find the anemone. I'm also trying a little tiny bit of TDO just in case, but we'll see. The male isn't eating yet, but I think he should probably by the end of the night, definitely by tomorrow. And we'll see what the future brings. 
I'm hoping to scale up. Uh, I will definitely keep at least a few of these guys for broodstock and then a few from this batch as well. And I'm hoping to eventually be able to actually produce a reasonable amount of bang guys. Uh, in a lot of ways they are much easier than clownfish, but then in some ways they are also harder. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments.